All right. Thank you, Eric. Uh, can you hold me correctly? Yep. All right. I'm French. You already know that. So the accents, sorry about that. You have to bear with me. I'll do my best. All right. So today we are talking about next draft mode and strapy preview. Um, so the agenda is re very quick, quick introduction. Then why do we even talk about draft mode and preview? And finally building it. So it's mostly a live coding session. I might do a lot of mistakes. Sorry about that. We'll see. So I'm Alex, the CTO at Strapi. I'm from France. I uh, live in the south of France, uh, south of Paris, sorry, uh, like one hour away. If you want to uh, reach out, you can reach out on X uh, with that handle. And with that, we can get started. So what do we need? Draft mode and preview. Why do we even care about that? Uh, it's a bit of an history lesson. I'll be very short. We have 10 minutes. So you already know what's a CMS and a headless CMS in particular. Yeah, I see head nodding. Cool. So in the past, we were using traditional CMSs. They were managing the admin panel. You were writing your contents, and then you were also rendering the contents in those CMSs directly, which meant that uh, those CMSs could manage the rendering of a draft of the published version of anything that would be uh, in progress work. It was very easy. Everything was in the same application, basically. And it was really just a seamless experience for content editors. Nowadays, we love our frameworks, the front-end frameworks. We love using Next and all of those different frameworks on the front-end. So we have our own custom front-end on one side, and we use the Atlas CMSs on the other side, like Strapi, uh, which creates a lot of uh, complexity when it comes to the content editing workflows. And that's the main problem I want to discuss. It's creating a seamless content preview system with the modern CMS workflows. Um, yeah, ad banking, definitely. Uh, so we have to think as a developer, we have to think about the content editors. You create an application for them, you give them a CMS at the end, the right content, and they are stuck in front of their CMS waiting for the content to update. So how does that happen? Um, when you use something like Next, you have all the static rendering, uh, you have other frameworks that have like uh, static site generation, all of those things make it very difficult to have dynamic content in the UI. And that's why the draft mode in Next was created. It's a way to bypass all the static stuff and just do dynamic rendering. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. And I'm going to also give you a sneak preview of the Strapi preview feature that's coming soon for us. All right, so let's build it. You will have to tell me if the code is big enough. All right. Yeah, looks good. OK, so I'm using the Launchpad, which is our demo app at Strapi. It features a Next application, Next Frontend, and a Strapi CMS, obviously. And I'm going to play with setting up the preview system and a draft mode with Next. So one of the first steps, obviously, is to enable the draft mode in Next. And what we are going to do is create a route uh, and it's going to be, oh, it's already there. Perfect. It's going to be called preview. And we're just going to do an export of that route. Um, so basically with Next, uh, you can have a server route and you can set up a draft mode. Draft mode is simply a cookie uh, that will be set up by Next uh, on rendering. Um, so that cookie helps you um, set up next and tell next to actually dismiss all the pre-rendering, all the caching, all of that is just gone and it's going to fetch the data directly. All right. Oops. And obviously you are in a server request. So you need to put a reference response. Oops. All right. So I'm enabling it. It's not in it's enabled. And return response. Right. Response. All right. Okay. So that would be the bit, the first step. Is okay. I have a root, and I'm gonna call it uh, like that. I'm gonna say okay. I'm fetching my next app and a preview. All right. Okay. I'm a hello world. It's kind of useless right now. And what you can see here is that you have a cookie set up for you by Next. That's cool. And uh, now I want to actually use it, make it something useful. So what I'm going to do is actually not just send a response, but redirect to the application so that I'm rendering my page. Oops, we must lost your uh, video. 
technical issues. Let's, have, let's yeah, maybe it's the issue, right? Just can I do it? Yes. I am just finished. There's no best things. Oh, that's a bad dog, yeah. Okay, we are back. All right. That's good. <laughs> um, all right, so. Yep. I'm going to redirect somewhere. And right now, I'm just going to redirect to my page. Yes. Just yeah. All right, going back to my website, API preview. All right, I'm back to my website and I see my website. Here, you don't see that it's draft mode or anything like that. It's kind of seems useless. And now what's interesting is starting to set it up with the connection to the Strapi draft system. Um, so, okay, I'm back on my, my page. No, I want to actually visualize something that's a draft mode. So I'm going to kind of spare you the details and I'm going to go in our fetching method. And in our fetching method, we are going to add a parameter for Strapi to know that because it's a draft mode, I'm, I have to fetch the draft content. So, all right. All right. So if it's enabled, then we're going to do status, let's be drafts. All right. Cool. And no. Great fetch. I see nothing. That's it. And it's because, well, I still have the same data on my Strapi UI. So I'm going to go in my Strapi dashboard. I'm going to in my home page. It's a bit small. And I'm going to say that in draft, I want to go into space instead. And see, I'm save there. All right. And no, because I'm on draft mode, I can see that I'm in space. So here, what Next is doing is just bypassing all the pre-rendering stuff. So it's in the dev mode, but if you were to build your next app, which is what's really important, you have to imagine your introduction, you've built your next application, you have pre-rendered all of your pages, they are static, it's all deployed, and then you are stuck with all the pre-rendering stuff. And with that draft mode, you can actually say next, well, just go to the server, render something dynamically and return the page instead of serving the pre-rendered stuff. Uh, all right, so that's cool. No, I want to actually see that I'm in draft mode and maybe exit. So that's what we're going to add here. Um, we are going to just go in my components there and we're going to create a simple banner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste it from another file. Such a nobody saw that, but it's only. All right, because otherwise it's going to take very long. And you will see that in that file, I'm basically just displaying a banner, but I'm going to fetch a API that's called exit preview. And that's the one we're going to build. All right. And this one can be really straightforward. Uh, what we really want to say is draft mode. Thank you for the complete disable. And I'm going to return an empty response to the remote. I can return hello world. It's fine. And now I'm going to actually show that banner somewhere. And the way you can show it only in draft, which is what you really want to do, is also check the draft mode in your page. So here I'm in my page layout. Draft. Draft mode, right? Uh, is any oops. I'm gonna put it here. It's gonna be draft error, right? And I want to say what, what, what Hey, hey. All right. So you just have the, your banner. You know that you're in draft mode. I want to exit my draft mode, and I see the data. What's very nice, maybe you didn't see that part here. We just fetch the exit, so it's going to delete the cookie. And we use a very neat feature in Next, which is the router refresh. And Next basically is going to refresh all the data fetching, call the server to ask for a fresh page. But it's going to also maintain all the React client side states. 
So you don't lose the scrolling, you don't lose all the interactivity you already were setting up. So it gives you like a kind of a dynamic refresh in terms of the page reload, so much more efficient. Okay. All right. So you've got all your setup on that side. It's pretty neat. And now we're just going to have a bit more fun and we are going to set up a real time uh, update instead of just visualization. Um, and before that, I'm going to even do something better because it's very annoying to actually have to go to slash API slash preview. I'm going to add the feature in Strapi so you can have a preview button. So it's a feature that is on preview at the moment. So actually enable it. And you can play with it. It's already live. You just need to enable the feature. Uh, right now it's an experimental version, but it's going to be soon in the latest version. So I would there we start. And now I have my open preview, so that's uh, the basic stuff. You click on the link and it's redirects you to where you're supposed to be. And it all does the redirection very cleanly. You get your draft mode view very easily. So as a content editor, you will see that the workflow is already much better. You can very quickly see, okay, I've made some modification. I've saved my draft and I can see what's happening. Um, all right. So now I talked about doing some real time stuff. Do you know server sent events? Is it something you've ever done? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So we are going to play a bit with this one. Um, and I have a component already created. That's cool. Event, I think. I wasn't really inspired by it. Let me find it. Uh, event. And this one is just doing a little interesting thing, which is basically listening to a route on Strapi, and that route is sending messages. I'm doing very basic logic here. I'm just receiving events and saying, okay, I should refresh. Here you would actually implement, uh, am I in the right place to refresh the stuff I'm doing? But the main idea is, okay, I'm going to listen to events that I'm subscribed to and then react and do something. So this is the client part. So same as the draft banner, you actually want only re render that uh, when you are in draft mode. Uh, you don't want to start adding something, subscribing uh, every time someone is rendering your website. That should be only in draft mode. So that's that. And on the strip side, you can really play. So that's one of our main advantages. You can play with custom routes in Strap. So I've built up a very simple uh, endpoint that's keeping alive the connection. And that's going to be streaming events based on events that happen inside Strapi. Uh, so I'm sending all the events, like when someone is creating an entry, updating an entry, deleting them. So you can really react to whatever you want. Bear in mind, I'm not managing any security here. So don't copy paste that code directly in production. You will have to handle that on your own, but that's the main idea. So everything is set up. Everything has restarted. And now it's the big demo effect. We'll see that very soon, hopefully. And I'm going to say that I want to go back to Orbit, actually. And I'm going to save. And tada, real-time updates. And this is really the, the neat thing is you can start building your own real-time um, version of the draft mode for next and your end users are going to really have a much better experience. Um, and you can imagine that you even do that like for some specific use cases directly in production if you, you want like uh, some very uh, uh, fresh data in some cases. Uh, all right, I think I'm running out of time. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any questions, good. I'm here to answer them. Do we do the Q&A directly? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Who is managing the mic? Yeah. Any questions for Alan? Does anything change with what you're doing with any of the, like, Next.js 15, for example? Like, what, what version of Next we're using for that? Has anything changed? Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah. So uh, this demo is done on Next 14. Um, I haven't showed some of the interesting features about revalidating the data in production. So right now it's just a draft mode. 
you're switching to draft mode and you get the refresh data. Um, one annoying part is also when you do static rendering is when you actually publish your content and you want to get that new content live in production, you might just have to restart a new pipeline, redeploy, rebuild the entire application with static site generations, kind of annoying. And next, actually have a revalidate pass, revalidate tag feature that can enable a live revalidation of content. So you could set up what I did for previews, but also for revalidating content on publication. Um, and one caveat and one big change between 14 and 15 is the caching method and the caching default in Next. Uh, in 13 and 14, the fetch methods were cached by default. That created a lot of trouble for people. And in 15, they reverted that change. So now the caching is actually disabled by default. So that's one thing that would be impacted here. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, and uh, could you repeat the question after it's been asked to? You? So the event connection to me seems like it's a webhook kind of um, situation. And it looks like it was handled on the front end with a use effect, right? Yeah. Um, is there a way to do that with server streaming? All right, so I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, so the, the real-time um, example that I showed uh, was using a use effect in the front end and was streaming events quite similar to webhooks. And can we do that with server sites? Um, yeah, so actually the, the way it's implemented right now is on the Strapi side, there is an endpoint, and uh, the front end with the use effect is creating a connection, and it's a stream connection, actually. So we already do the streaming. It's just that we do it from the Strapi server to the next front, but you could also, if you want, and for security reason, you might actually do that, is do a proxying system. So you actually listen to the next, you can stream from the next endpoint and then listen in the next backend to Strapi. So I had that set up first, but it was a bit too much to go. Uh, so actually, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So pricing issues maybe, but the, with Next, you have an option. Uh, you can set the, the functions themselves as force dynamic. There is an option. So you kind of tell Next, well, let this run uh, kind of forever. So as long as the connection is open Next and Verso in particular, is that Next will actually leave it open so you can make it work. You should. Can you repeat what that question was? Uh, yeah, the, sorry. The, the question was, um, in relation to Versal, when you deploy Next, you deploy uh, server functions. Uh, leaving connection open is not really something you do with serverless, but uh, Versal and Next, uh, there is an option which is called force dynamic. You can set up the Next routes to actually uh, leave connections open. Awesome. Uh, big round of applause for Alex.